Jordan. Alex. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of feelings. Well, what are those feelings? I can't think of a word, it's like kind of cathartic. Like I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm pumped, prideful, but also feel like humble, like high, and it's like a color, I'm like turquoise. It's like a color, I don't have the word for it. I think while I'm doing this whole fight thing, I'm gonna have to try to find the word that describes the way you feel after you win. It's like not quite like when my daughter was born, it's not quite like the first water after you have after weigh-ins. Like it's there's not a word for it. It's, it's amazing. So it's just a color for right now. How, how did you feel about your performance? Um, first round, I was I felt confident for this camp. But first round was a little like a little like okay, how hard is he gonna hit? And then when I thought I had that anaconda for like a minute and a half, and I gasped my arms, my fingers started to tingle. I was like, that's not good. Then he hit me with a nice two piece at the end, and I was like, okay, you get hit all the time. So after that point, I, the second round, I tried to counter with some elbows off the fence when he would come in, but he noticed when I hit him twice, so he was a little bit more patient. So I actually had to get on the front foot, and yeah, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the performance. There were some holes. I don't, it wasn't my masterpiece. I'm still trying to find that fight for me. Uh, you came in on crutches. Are you uh, feeling okay? I, in the second round, he smiles at me. Like, he throws a leg kick, and I kind of, like, stanky leg my foot out of the way. But when it did, like, my ankle, like, caught, and, like, it popped. And like good thing he kind of smiled at me because he gave me a second to kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, touch gloves and like kind of assess how my foot felt. The doctor thinks it's probably just like a sprain or something. I'll get, I'll get x-rayed on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, you walked out to hot in here. What was that decision? It was like my wife's idea. Like last, I walked out to like um, Pippin's song from Lord of the Rings last time. And I just played, as soon as I played, like my entire like emotions dropped. I don't know what my idea was about walking out to the song that Faramir like dies in the movie. Very sad, definitely like mellowed me out so much. So this, my wife was like trying to, we were trying to find fun songs to kind of like make me feel playful and loose. And then she's like, I found your song and she like played it. It's like, dun, dun, dun. And I was like, you're right, that's the song. So it was her idea. Um, you were coming into this fight off a loss for the first time in your career. I mean, what were the feelings like before the fight? Pretty chill, I mean, unless I got like highlighted I wasn't going to feel any worse than I felt last fight, and that wasn't too bad. You know, um, I didn't have a lot of feedback from my, um, until I had that loss. You never know what things you're doing wrong, if it's all kind of working out. I kind of feel like for the up until about six months ago, I kind of feel like I was just kind of winging it. Doing my weight cuts on my own, kind of like organizing the camp on my own, not doing private lessons, buying instructionals, and then you lose. And then you realize you kind of have to, kind of have to outsource some responsibilities. And so for this fight, like I knew I was the most prepared I've ever been. I'm skin. I have abs again. Haven't had abs in a little bit. Um, I felt prepared, and I was a little nervous backstage. But I knew I had the trust. I had the trust, like in my training. I'm. I can't believe myself a lot of the time, but I can try to do it for 15 minutes every six months. You know. Uh, when would you like to get back in there? Oh, February, March would be awesome. Maybe fight for Black History Month. I don't know. Um, I want to stay active. When I, when I, when I always, it's easier for me to train when I have an opponent in mind. But until then, I'll just focus on myself. It's kind of what I did this camp because I made a mistake of after for my fight before the last one was um, I prepared so much for the fighter, but then in, he hadn't fought in two a little bit over two years, so he improved so much. So I feel like you prepared for like a phantom, and that person didn't exist. So for this fight, I kind of just focused on myself and improving my skills as opposed to like trying to game plan. So it looks like I was kind of like, eh, winging it the first little bit. It's because I was, and just got trust in my abilities. Your, your, your three UFC fights so far have been against opponents that have been coming off layoffs. Like, do you want someone for your next fight that's been kind of active so that you can Yeah, I would love to be able to do film and feel good, and like feel like I kind of have a good screenshot of what my opponent's like. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not the person who looks at a time off and is like, oh, he's going to be rusty. I'm excited for that one. I'm the person like, because when I blew out my knee, when I've been injured, I've improved exponentially because when you're not like working, you're not working on like your physical abilities, you're kind of working on your mental abilities. So whenever I see a long layoff, it makes me so anxious because they could be bad, but generally like you don't want to come back after an injury and then suck. So generally, you try your hardest, and people always have to prove to themselves that they are good, they belong. So I was expecting Matt to be as patient and tricky as he is, and he had a good energy at the weigh-ins, and I kind of like, 
like an anime where you see the characters look at each other and the lightning goes between their eyes. I kind of had that moment, and I really, I really felt like our energies matched, and I was like ready for a scrap. That's awesome. And then finally, for me, your your longtime teammate Roxanne Montefiore got proposed to you uh, last night. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So you know, like when you watch a TV show and something happens, you're like, "There's no way that would ever happen in real life." It was why I, mean, I knew she was going I knew they were gonna engage pretty soon. Like you kind of got the feel if you know them. They're like, they're, I'm not sure I believe in soulmates, but they kind of seem like they are soulmates. And so her, boy, her man gets a legally need, unconscious, wakes up. It's like the Willy Wonka. They he somersaults. Everyone's all worried. And then he jumps back up and he just proposed. I had the whole entire roller coaster spectrum of emotions. So I, I like Chris, he got hurt, and then he gets up, he's all smiling, like, why is he smiling? Like, he doesn't know what happened. And then he proposed, and then she says yes, and I'm like, whoa. So that was a crazy, like, 300 seconds, and I'm like, I don't think me and my corner are still over it. Like, we were like, did you see this? Did this happen? Did we all pop shrooms or something? Did we just trip, like, share a vision? But, ah, Roxanne's really having like, a storybook ending, and I couldn't be happier. Congratulations. Thank you. I've just got one for you. Uh, you mentioned that you know when you have an opponent that's coming in off of a big layoff, you don't know what to expect. Was there anything that surprised you about him? Um, he's improved his takedown defense pretty good. He went for that guillotine on me, and I had half a mind kind of let him gas his arms out, because I'm like, no one's going to guillotine me like that. Um, he was patient, surprisingly strong. Like, he had some like farm boy strength I wasn't expecting. Um, he, was, like, he had like some weird... He was like powering out of moves and like his neck was so strong. I felt like I was trying to like, to like squeeze a rock when I was trying to strangle him. Like my arms were hurting, like he had a hard head. And just a fun one, I'm asking all the fighters tonight if they have a New Year's resolution and what it is. My New Year's resolutions are to fight four times and to read a book a week. Um, two years ago I read 100 books for the year and it's my first year as a dad so I didn't want to like set a goal and then like neglect my family because I'm reading The Wheel of Time or whatnot. So. A book a week, my baby started to like talk. She crawled for the first time. I was in quarantine for three hours and she crawled her first step, so that kind of pissed me off. But um, I'm a happy dad. I'm, I think I'm gonna have a little bit more time next year. Would you count Goodnight Moon as a, bu a book a week? Do you have a, like a rule of how long those books have to be? As long as not a novella, I, yeah. As long as an actual book. I mean, if I count a children's book, I can finish that January 1st. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Monkey King, congrats on the win. Thank you. That, that submission was bananas. Oh, thank you. Please I my tell me how you were able to see that opening, because we don't hear inverted triangle very often. Yeah, um, I have a teammate, Dimitri, and he has really good grappling. And we have like had like maybe a dozen like 30-minute rounds this camp, and and he's one of the few people that is like crazy enough and good enough to grapple with me on a consistent basis. And every time he takes me down against the cage, I'm able to like kind of like work for that one. And I knew because of my karma from the Matt Wyman fight, that someone was going to try to slam me off one day. And I did not want that to happen because that sound, that looked really painful and atrocious. So when he went to pick me up and I was like, okay, let me kind of like put my butterflies in and slow down that momentum. And then he, he put me down. Everyone, after they slammed me, they let go and post their hand on the mat. And I instantly hooked it in. And I wasn't sure if I had because I, as I said before, like his, his head and neck was like a brick. But everyone tries to like poke her face out of it. They don't react. And then when he realized I wasn't to stop squeezing, he started to panic. And I heard the gurgle. It was awesome. I mean, it was, it was a good feeling. Because I was like, oh, I hit that move. One of those stupid moves they tell you not to put, you know, that you're not going to like rely on. And I relied on it. So I'm pretty happy. Um, I think I was, I was totally, it was number three in UFC history. I'm a little bummed I'm not the first. But, you know, there's not every, it's very hard to do something new. But I'll try to find a submission that hasn't done the UFC. I'm going to get it. Right on, man. That looked great. And last for me, uh, you talked about kind of like this person, the responsibility after that loss. Can you elaborate on that? What did you have to take off your own shoulders to focus on other things? Um, I started leaning into like trainers and like coaches a lot more. I've always, I don't want to say like, I'm not coachable, but I'm like, if you teach me something, I'm like, it's not mine. I forget about it. And like, I'll do it when you're watching, but I'm never going to like train it. But I knew I had to work on my boxing. I knew I had to work on my wrestling defense and my cardio and my strength. And so Kyle Larimer at the PI, strength conditioning coach, leaned into him. PJ May, the flexibility maestro himself, like he's my flexibility and strength coach. So the reason why I could do all those splits and stuff, I leaned into him a lot because he helped me get, he, he's helped me, helped get me healthy the past year. I started working with Neil Melanson a lot more, the, the ground marshal himself. Um, 
old school like legend in this sport and pad man for my boxing. Didn't show off my boxing because I was like too busy trying to land elbows and front kicks to the face. But I just I outsource a lot of those responsibilities because even if I think I'm smart and I think I'm a little bit above average in intelligence, I can't see all my weaknesses. And I need to have people around me with a good vision who are honest and care about me enough to say what you're doing, this specific thing that you're doing is going to get you hurt one day and I have to trust them. So this camp is all about confidence and we're surrounding, my pe surrounding myself with like people and family and training partners that I trust to, to um, want what's best for me. So I had to give up a lot of responsibility and I had to like open up myself up a lot more and trust and take some chances and I'm glad it paid off. Excellent. Well, it looks like it is. I mean, congrats on the win, my man. Thank you very much.